another special edition of News One Now, a conversation with the front man of one of the most prolific bands in modern music history, Frankie Beverly. We'll chat about his musical roots, the evolution of Maze, the unique relationship Maze has with a loyal African-American fan base, and the foundation for their illustrious music career. For 40 years, Frankie Beverly has been the voice behind the band's amazing, unfiltered soul and funk. And with mega hits like Happy Feelings, Golden Time of Day, and Before I Let Go, their infectious rhythms have stood the test of time more than most musicians will see in a lifetime. Amaze has never won a Grammy Award, American Music Award, a Soul Train Award, or experienced mainstream success, but the band has endeared themselves to a devoted African-American fan base. And no barbecue, no family reunion or wedding is complete without their music at the family get-together. Armed with his arsenal of music anthems and broad spectrum of musical influences, Frankie Beverly is the creative spark of this phenomenon. He simply, along with Maze, amazing. Music that has always been a part of the movement socially, what's been going on. They, they do feel good music, but they also do soul music that speaks to the generation. It speaks to what's going on in the news, socially. I think we need to kind of get back to that too. I think the audience needs to understand that us as artists not only um, do what we do because we love what we do, but we use this as a platform to get a message to them as well. And I think Frankie Beverly and Mays do that. Frankie Beverly and Mays are road warriors. They're always out there gigging. I mean, you can't pick up a newspaper or anything out without seeing Frankie Beverly and Mays. Frankie Beverly and Mays everywhere in the world ever since they've been going. You know, they're that, they're the kind of group that back in the day, R&B groups wanted to be like. The fact that he hasn't made an album in like 52 years and it still resonates with us is, is, it just shows you it's real music, real instruments, and it comes from his soul. If you ever seen him perform, it's from his soul, it's his gut. Like, I've seen him at least 15 times and he's probably performed over 800,000 times. And every time I've seen him, he acts like the song, like probably the first day he ever wrote or performed the song. It's so real. I mean, I remember growing up and, you know, my parents playing it in the house and also just going to so many jazz, like Sinbad's jazz festivals. I used to go to that and Sinbad would have them there. And it was just, it just brings back great memories of good R&B. You know what I mean? Favorite Frankie Beverly and May's song of all time is Golden Time of the Day. Um, and it's because I'm a sunrise person, but I also love the sunset. So that song just puts me into a whole another space and like really kind of um, gets me into a vacation or a chill out mode no matter where I'm at. Frankie Beverly, what's happening? Hey man, you know, hanging in there. Y'all good? Hanging in there. Y'all been at this thing a long time. Yeah. And what's interesting is, and, and I'll never forget, you were performing in Dallas and Gap Band came up before you guys came on. And you came out there and you said, hey, we're working on this new album. And the whole audience cracked up laughing. They just cracked up laughing like, man, whatever. You know what? Sing what we know. Yeah, that's, it's, it's, you know, that is true. And it's a deeper relationship between Mays and, and, their, and their people. It's, I've, I can't put my finger on it, but I recognize it and I see it. So that's why they don't care. Yes, they want something new, but it, it's not the old record business kind of thing. Hey, you better put something out soon, otherwise people will forget you and blah. But that never happened with us. So, and it's turned in, into what you see now. It's, it, it amazes me to this, to this day, man. The reason why I like Joy and Pain is because that's what their music is. Their music is about happiness. Their music is about sadness. It's about reflection. It makes you feel good. It e evokes uh, emotions. And you know, it's not bad backyard barbecue music. Yeah, we love Frankie Beverly and Mays. One of the reasons we love art as a collective, as humanity, is because we recognize the highs and lows, and we see ourselves in it. And Frankie Beverly and Mays is not just musical and lyrical. And Before I let go, it, it, that I feel like I mean that's just like family reunion. That just brings back all the nostalgic moments in my, in my head. You know, it's just like that's the that's the song that everyone knows. That's the that's the cape. So I'm um, before I let go, I think. So yeah. You can't pick one. Everything about them is fabulous. 
what would you say it is that, that what makes your music so unique that touches people in a different way? Love. It's gotta be love. It's bigger stuff going on than, than this is not just us or me or something. There's some other things going on in the background. There's a, we have a helper <laughs> that does this for, for us. I believe that. I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus. And it's about that to me. It's about love. That's the difference between Mays and Mays' people. I look out in the audience, man, and I see people getting along. <laughs> It's just, it's just inspiring. And, and multi generational. Just multi, just everything. You got grandmama and grandfather oh, and their oh. children and their kids' kids. It's just amazing, you know, and, and, and it's, it's just enthuses me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm from the, I'm the ex flower child. <laughs> so this is like unbelie unbelievable to me. I don't know if there's another act. Oh, no, That's no. Ever, this kind of thing is happening. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm being, I, look, I've, I've told people, I've said this. In fact, I remember when I was on CNN, I said it too. I said, white folks got the Grateful Dead, yeah. they got fish, <laughs> and there's mates. <laughs> I said, it's just, I said, it's, it's they funny. come into town, you, you, ain't even, you ain't even thought about a new song, I'm going. Look. And you know you're going to party. And you can bring your kids with you. You know, you know, you're not worried about folks being butt naked. Right. You're not worried about cursing. Right. You're not right. worried about any of that. Right. You know, it's going to be about right. an absolute good right. time. We're going, we, 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 we're going to get down. We're going, we're going to have a good time. So when you're singing and the whole joint is singing the lyrics, and you can just stand there and just I know. to go, you you can literally walk off stage, it's, go get some water, go get something to eat. You can actually take a nap because all the band got to do is just switch the song. They gonna start singing whatever the band. Is. You're right. I mean, you're actually right. I mean, there's times when I uh, when I'm hoarse and stuff, and that just saves me. The people just. You know, y'all sing. Okay, we got it. Sing it with all your might. Joy! Well, we have pain. A light shine, shine. And it rain. Sing it with me right now. Joy! Thank you. Thank you. Hear me, Y'all paid uh, yeah. to come here and sing. It is. It's just unbelievable, man. It is. And it makes us, makes us work hard. And, and make us do everything we can to maintain this thing that we have. I love happy feelings, though, because it makes me happy. And I think, like Melinda said, it's their feel-good mu music. It feels good. It makes you happy. And that's what I want in my life. And I think that's why they have such longevity. It's like they've been around forever. I, they, don't, <laughs> they don't get old or anything. Happy feelings. Happy feelings everywhere. It just, it's one of those songs that makes you feel happy. When that thing comes on, you just, it just automatically puts you in that mood, a good mood. And um, that's one of my favorite Frankie Beverly Main songs. Coming up, my conversation continues with Frankie Beverly. We'll chat about his musical roots and his early career years as a doo-wop singer in his hometown of Philadelphia. Folks, don't touch that dial. Simply amazing. A conversation with Frankie Beverly continues right here on TV One. I got so much in the Frankie line, man, growing up. It's just sing on the corner. They just pitch me quarters. And it's to sing, I sang every song, and they used to call me Little Frankie. Frankie Beverly and Maze is the, I don't want to curse, but I really feel it. I just love them. I saw them in Vegas not that long ago, and I sang every song, and I'm like, am I dating myself? I don't care. I'm singing every song. <laughs> I had a great time. What makes them special is the fact that they've been able to have a career that lasts, you know, my lifetime. I mean, not too many people get to make music that is going to transcend generations, and their music continues to transcend, so it's great. 
my favorite Frankie Beverly and May song, Before I Let Go. Been in five weddings in the last three years, and that's the, that's the perfect uh, reception song. Everyone's on the dance floor, your grandmother, your aunt, your uncles, you know, the kids. It's the perfect reception, family reunion song. It just sums it all up. You said you are a, a, a former flower, flower child. Yes. But, and people think in terms of Mays being a West Coast, but, but y'all didn't start off West Coast. Not at all. Where did this whole thing begin? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That is not West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it is not West Coast. A great city. Glad I was born and raised. Raised there kind of prepares you for what life is. Um, some of the greatest music ever. Down and dirty people. Straight up. It's a good place to, to be raised because it really teaches you what, you what you're gonna have to go through in life. And the same thing in everything you do. In music, same thing. I used to sing in the church till about the time Frankie Lyman came. It just turned my whole life around. How so? He got me. My name is Howard. My name is not Frankie. My mother named me that ugly ass name, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Howard Beverly. Howard, Howard. I got so much into Frankie Lyman. Growing up, it's just sing on the corners. They just pitch me quarters. And it's to sing, I sang every song, and they, they used to call me Little Frankie. So, and that's how you became here I am. Frankie Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this cat had me tooth and nails, man. He just turned my whole life around. That's who Frankie Beverly is, who, where I came from. Yeah. Philadelphia. Tried used to be around the town. New grew up with Teddy and Harold Melvin and all those with Cat Patty, all of us, you know. We had a little different kind of little thing and went from we used to call we used to call the Butlers. Had that group for a while. Made some 45s around, you know. Uh, pretty good records. But number it's just nothing. They and after we got going through, as I say, come through them sixties, I got out of the singing group thing, mm -hmm. and I decided, and as a matter of fact, the group broke up. The Beatles broke us up. Some of the guys wanted the, the to sing. The Beatles The Beatles <laughs> made some of the guys in the group, the singing group, think that we should all grab an instrument and do it just like I said, you guys crazy, you know? <laughs> so it really broke the group up. I was sitting around, I was living with a pimp, as a matter of fact. You were living with a pimp in well, Philadelphia. I had to, you know, my father, you know. <laughs> he like, this singing stuff ain't I it. I quit a job, boy. <laughs> I quit a job that he got me. Oh, yeah. And because we rehearsed late that night before I could get up and. Oh, yeah. Man, he found out about that when he got home, man. He came in. I said, but Dad, I want to sing. Go upstairs, <laughs> pack your bags. <laughs> Get your behind. I, I'm telling my mother was like, Lord, you ain't gonna put that boy out there. Yeah. Go upstairs, I'm telling you, man. And put me out, man. Well, Daddy said, we put already gave his name up, so me, I ain't putting our son yeah, out. Put, put, they put me out, man. I don't care. I, I feel I'm pre But this man, if it wasn't for him, I learned what he meant. I learned what he meant. You know, they coming up up in the time, you had to, you better have a job, man. And that's all he was me. You better, you know, I know, yeah, I know you can sing, but, you know, and I had to learn that. And I learned it. Me and my father got tight as you could be. Mm. I took him to Europe with me. We, we, you know, you live and you learn. <laughs> I mean, I like a lot of the songs. I think it's impactful because it, uh, it speaks to so many generations. I mean, they can work the same album on tour for the next 20 years. And it's, it's great melody. It's, it's real music. It's kind of where it all started. You know, Frankie Beverly, the white hat, the, the, the white slacks, you know, you can't go wrong with that. I grew up on that. That's how I got here, probably. I've been to several Frankie Beverly concerts, and, you know, at that point, when everyone starts singing, it becomes Frankie Beverly karaoke. And I just think that his, his songs are just fun. 
you know, they're fun and they're vibrant and they, you just want to have a good time. I think he represents that. Does it ever cross your mind what you would be doing if you didn't sing? Very little. <laughs> <laughs> that crosses my line. Very much. The reason I ask that question because there are a lot of people who had a dream of singing, hmm. but they gave up. They quit. They gave in. They didn't persevere. And they may be watching this. They may have passed on. And they are 68, mm -hmm. 70, mm -hmm. and they have regrets. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that because that's what made me say. That's what made me say, man. And I'll say to anybody, don't you dare, man. Like they, more than most people, like you say, don't pursue the gift that was given up. No matter the field. The gift, whatever. They, all of us have a, a thing. All of us, and you, some of us know it too, and you, you know, yeah, yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. We talk about instruments, we're talking about music, we're talking about doing you. But who do you like to listen to? You know, in my, where I'm at now in my life, I'm, I'm an old schooler, I like, jazz more than ever in my life. Mm -hmm. I play a lot. I love Miles Davis. I love his temperament, his whole thing. But I, I, I will also go on like international stations and hear what other people do too. I, I just, I just, I'm not, uh, you know, a hit breaker type thing. I'm not, I'm not so much into that. It's, I like all sorts of music, yeah. I don't have, if, if I have to go with people that, um, that, I, that I really love, and that they, I would have to be old school, mm -hmm. you know. I, I like the older singer, the older Sarah Vaughn and stuff like that. Like I said, uh, 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 Charlie Parker, I love mm -hmm. too. You know, I, I just kind of really like that. And, the great songs, you know, it's just more, more or less that, that than what today's thing is. Laid back uh, kind of girl, you know what I mean? Because I'm a laid back kind of guy, so I, I like a laid back kind of girl. And you can go uh, Joy and Pain, you can just go on and on, you know what I mean? Uh, golden time of the day. You know, every song is just touches on everything, every emotion that's inside of you. And, you know, I always love seeing them in concert. And until the day they stop singing music, I'm going to continue to listen to them and continue to go to their concerts. I'm not going to pick one. That's, that's, that's like picking your favorite child. That's, you can't do that. Who's your favorite child? Come on. You can't pick one. You can't pick one. It's an, it's, it's an impossible question. You can't. No way. My favorite song? Uh... I don't know. It's a lot of them. That's kind of hard. Um, after the morning after. Know that one? Oh, don't after the those. night before. You trying to give me the thing, huh? I like that one. Next, the conversation heats up when Frankie Beverly breaks down being broke. So broke, in fact, that he had to live with a pimp. Yeah, you heard me right. Wait until you hear this story. Plus, the soulful singer Marvin Gaye helped him get his financial footing and bring Frankie Beverly and Mays to life. Folks, you're watching Simply Amazing, a conversation with Frankie Beverly right here on TV One. He originally wanted to produce a record on us. And so years went by and we was, listen, the man was taking care of us. He bought us, he bought us new equipment, paid about a year back rent. Because we was, we didn't have much, man. We all lived together. Start because the group broke up. So I didn't know what to do. He was a, 
he was a drummer, old drummer. It was a, not a, this was an older guy. Right, he, right, he right. Cared about me, really, really good, you know, good, good guy. So, and he suggested one night, him and another fella, said, man, let me, let's take you up to Eastern Pennsylvania. I want you to see Hal Melvin and the I said, I, I, I know them, I remember them. But when I knew Hal Melvin, they were just a singing group. You knew it from the neighborhood. From the neighborhood. And, and, not and, on the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, on stage, but gotcha. they were singing like the gotcha. Dells and, and gotcha. things like, like, like that. And uh, he had three, four singers up front and a four-piece band. So that, and when after I left there, it gave me this inspiration to do what you basically see now, mm -hmm. a, a band behind us singers of, you know, that's kind of was designed around what I learned from Harlan. And that was the first time I had seen uh, basically that in this, in this R&B thing. Harlan and them had this set up too. And, uh, it inspired me to to depth, man. Because I was like, the group broke up. I was, man, how, you know, being whatever. And uh, them cats, man, get up off your behind, man. Get this thing together. And I put together three up front and three in the back. And you were called? We, I, I still called it the Butlers, though. Okay. Because it was my name. Right. So we we went on, worked clubs. That's, that's that act that... When I'm down the East Coast, and just it made me stay true to that. Yes, as it went along, it got better. We decided to do this. We decided to do that, and now suddenly uh, we changed the name to Raw Soul. To so Raw Soul. Raw Soul. And then you have an encounter with the sister of. Yes, Marvin Gaye. We were playing it in uh, San Francisco. Went from Philadelphia to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Chasing the little dream, you know, went out there, starved almost to death, you know. But we still working in clubs. She came in, saw us, really loved us, told us Marvin was interested in a band backing him up mm -hmm. that could open up a few songs in the front of him. Mm -hmm. So I told her, well, I'm not interested in backing him up, but I'd sure like to <laughs> get this opened in the thing in front of him. Thing. Right. So, and out of left field, one day we're playing, and he's sitting in the audience in the, in the club, too. Really, wow. really little club. And uh, just loved us, man. Just a sweet man. Um, the raw soul thing. He said, man, that's the ugliest ass name <laughs> I've heard in my life, man. Change that ugly name. You're not going to make it with that. So Marvin Gaye says, yeah, I got to get rid of this name. Right. Now, well, y'all saying, look, we know you Marvin Gaye, but, man, we like our name. Or did y'all say? Yeah. A, a little bit, but we, we, we were willing to change it. <laughs> <laughs> Some clicks here. Yeah, this we, is Marvin Yeah, Gaye. we were willing to change the name, you know, so. So and, how uh, did you come to Mays? Uh, tossing names around, tossing names. It must have taken months. Is it Frankie Beverly and Mays, or is it Mays featuring Frankie Beverly? What it's, is it? It was originally Mays featuring Frankie Beverly. But because of what we are, we're, 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 we're a unit. People know we're a unit. People can say, Frankie Beverly, they still mean Maze. They say Maze, they still mean it's, it's worked out. I asked the question about uh, the name because whenever I, I look at a lot of the unsungs on TV One, man, so many groups broke up because of ego. Right. Well, we didn't like so-and-so getting out front getting all the shine and the publicity. And I'm sitting there going, man, look, if y'all getting paid. Yeah, me too. It, it, it does not matter. Yeah. How, how did y'all make sure it, it, you didn't have that drama? Or did you where it was kind of like, well, you know, Frankie Beverly Mays, we the band, and he out there. Versus, look, man, we all getting this check. Yeah, I didn't have that. I mean, it was, it was basically something I put together anyway. So there was a respect for that anyway. I mean, it's, no, I never had that. Does, does, I never but, had but how, how do you respond to that when you know uh, acts and, and they were phenomenal groups? Yeah. Then all of a sudden somebody leaves, they're not as big, big as a solo singer, and you're yeah. going, you broke up a good thing? Yeah, I, don't, I never understand that. I mean, I don't want to mention names. I've never under, understood how certain acts that I remember sitting here in my own mind uh, couldn't get that together. I mean, even if it's a question of, okay, feature him. 
why not? What's what's so? up? <laughs> I mean, it's it's you know you're not gonna get no less than what you're supposed to get. It's not gonna change nothing. It is what it is. And usually those things work themselves out. Yeah. So Marvin Gaye uh, basically touches you guys, anoints you guys. Yes. And then all of a sudden, what happens? Now you got your name. Now you got the blessing of Marvin. Yes. Things take well, off. Well, well, he well not not immediately because he wanted to produce us. Mm -hmm. He originally wanted to produce a, a record on us. And so years went by, and we was unless the man was taking care of us. He bought us, he bought us new equipment, paid about a year back rent, cause we was we didn't have much, man. We all lived together, and we how many? About eight of us. Eight of y'all living yeah. in one place. Yeah. Marvin decided, sat me down one day. Frank, hold on, man. You know I love you. Boo, boo, boo. Of course, man. Boo, boo. Listen, man. I can't do what I was normally trying to do. And, and you know, I'm an artist myself. I'm an artist. I mean, if I get a great song, I ain't giving it to you. <laughs> it's short, it's short. <laughs> you know, and I understand that. Trust me, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. But he was honest with me, man. He said, man, I'll do whatever you need. I'll help you. But man, you know, try to do your thing. You know, blah, send demos, or you know. Told he was very, very honest with He me. was honest, yeah. but, but surely you were sitting there thinking, okay, I appreciate the honesty, but okay, what we gonna do now? No, because we had kind of made a name for ourselves in the clubs again. You know, we've, we had, you know, this thing that we've done all our lives would pay, still helped us maintain ourselves. So, and so we were okay. We were. I know he was a, a good man. And so no, I didn't even trip like that. We sent demos around, and it wasn't even maybe over a year. That's long to have a demo floating around. But Larkin Allen calls me one, one one day. Hey man, you you Frankie Beverly? Yeah, I got a hat. This man, this is the blip 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 and all this man. You know, my then manager was. I mean, I, I hand the phone to him, because I had heard this message before. <laughs> you know, I handed the phone to him, and he's talking, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And I'm looking up at him, he's, yeah. And I said, is he serious? <laughs> and he said, <laughs> the first album, Locking Up, he was real. He really was. When he met me, he was a man. Yeah, this is the blah, blah, blah. He's always just like, wow, I hope I, can, I, hope I come through for this guy, you, you know. But no, he signed us. I had never produced an album, and I, you know, I want to produce the album. Man, you can produce whatever you want to do, you know. And I kind of want to keep my publish, you know. You can have all your pub everything, man. Okay. everything. And that's God right there. Every <laughs> Did not say Cause, that. Because that, that is not hey, a man, music business hey, story. Man, hey man, hey, this is for real. First hit record. First hit record was Wallow Malone. Wasn't big, but the first album overtook any single that we put out. Mm -hmm. That's why Happy Feelings was never a single. They left Happy Feelings on the album because that was like killing. Have you ever wondered what the logo for Maze means? Well, you'll find out after the break when Frankie Beverly fills us in on the significance of the seven fingered hand. He also takes me on his trip to stardom and shares why he thinks folks in the South have shown May so much love over the years and why the band is America's best kept secret of the black folks we know what the secret sauce is. You're watching Simply Amazing, a conversation with Frankie Beverly on TV One. To really get Frankie Beverly, aside from the many, many great records, is to be at a live Frankie Beverly show, particularly in the South, and watch the whole audience turn into like the most incredible choir that you never knew existed. So that's what happens at a Frankie Beverly concert. Everybody sings along. It feels so good. Woo! 
Thank God for them Southern girls and all that other great Frankie Beverly. You make me happy and all that. Woo. So, Frank, what's up with the logo? So, uh, six fingers, seven fingers, what's the deal? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually six fingers and one thumb. Obviously, I'm... That's I'm a big hand. Because <laughs> there were seven of us in the band. Right. And that's where that came, came, came yeah. from. Yeah. And, and you're the thumb. I'm the thumb. So that that's why it's six fingers and one thumb. So when folks get out of hand, you push their yeah, thumb yeah, down yeah, on them. Yeah, I got and the, you keep them straight. I, I'm a strong You're the taskmaster. <laughs> But yeah, that did, and, and and again, you know, like I said, that uh, that that hand, if you go, that's a maze too. You can go all the way to. We had contests for, for people winning that, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So it all works out again. It's it all makes sense, and it all you know does its thing. Well, it's worked thus far. Yeah, yeah, man. It has. All right. Yeah. I guess you yeah. might as well stay with it. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> Think so, man. All right, yeah. cool. When did you really say, okay, I, I think we made it? Um, it was it was quite easy actually. After about three months, maybe two months or something, I went down to the office down in the uh, Capitol building and I met with Mark and you know, we were just talking, hey man, do you, do, you know, you can do a promotion tour, we can really put something little Blah, 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 blah. And he asked me, he said, how many records do you think you sold so, so far? Because I wasn't hearing a lot up in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I wasn't hearing a lot. So judging by that, I'm, well, you know, a couple thousand, three, three, four thousand or something like that. He said, man, you just sold about $200,000 in New Orleans alone. <laughs> in New Orleans, the record had sold about, about 400000 at this point. Something like that. It was really, really up in, and, two, and half of it came out of the New Orleans, uh, Texas area. Yeah. So I was blown away with that. I had no idea what, what that was. What are you? What is it about that? Because there has always been this unbelievable love affair yes. between New Orleans yes. and Mays. Yes. And you're right, Houston and Mays. That's right. Very, very unusual, man. That's why I said. You know, man, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I don't. This ain't me. This ain't just me. That's the way I look at it. You, earlier, you talked about when performing. You said, "Look, man, when you had to go out there, you had to compete." Was there a particular singer or group who was on the same bill with y'all? Where you said, "Okay, we gonna have to bring it, cause they on it." I mean, Ed Levert said whenever they, he said whenever they would go out, it was the Temptations and the Four Tops and the Spinners, mm. and cats were like, yeah, y'all gonna have to do a little something because we, because we just hit the joint off. You know, it was a few that was like that in my day. Who? Oh, the Commodores, um, um, War, uh, oh my God, you know, the Fire of. Uh, Back in those hippie days, slide, but you better bring it. You better not be messing around. <laughs> <laughs> they embarrass you, you know. So, but again, all of that stuff winds up helping you mm -hmm. and making you just just like that. I don't to this day. I don't care who's on in front of me or who's but, but, or what they did. I've heard so many different stories. How a lot of artists today, they don't want that kind of competition on the bill with them. Yeah, that's ridiculous to me. That's ridiculous. You're not gonna go nowhere. Then. You're not gonna. That's that's absurd to me. You gotta. That's what's gonna make you what you are. If depending on you, this ball's in your court. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on you, you become a person. Eddie Levert, for instance, right right now. Eddie Levert don't care who go in front or back back no. it up. <laughs> he don't care, man. <laughs> and I know exactly what he what he mean. I don't care. I, I sometimes. If the show is too big, got too much of that, I don't even want to hear what's going on. I don't see it, the, the show anyway when I'm in the dressing room. Right, right. But sometimes I can hear the show, and some, sometimes I just don't even. I don't care. I don't want to even care. I don't want to have that nothing to compare it with. Mm -hmm. We just go out there and do what we gonna do. But I believe that most of us have this same gift, this a gift that they can do that would make change their whole lives if they hung in there. I believe that to my heart.
Is there any one song that y'all have done that has meant more to you personally? Uh, one, no, but there are some that stand out to me. Such as? We Are One stands out mm -hmm. to me. For just the title tells you why. Right. I believe that to my heart. We're all the same. Stop the whatever. Coming up, Frankie Beverly tells me what Soul Tree songstress he would love to share the stage with and also chats about his unique connection to soul diva Anita Baker. Plus, he'll tell you why she's really upset with him. More of Simply Amazing, a conversation with Frankie Beverly right here on TV One. Is anybody you've always wanted to do something with musically, you haven't had a chance to do so? Um, Sade. Ooh. And, and I'll tell you why I said that, because I've always liked her music and stuff too, but I, I never met her. Never met her and, and always, and I heard her one day doing an, an, an interview and talking about, they asked, well, who's your friend? Oh, Frankie Beverly, blah, 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 blah. I would love to tour. Blah, blah. Oh, like, and we tried to put that together, but it was so hard. You know, she's, you know, I. She's a free spirit. I'm, I'm a man, I manage my thing. Nobody, we don't have right. managers and stuff. So I, if, if I can decide, hey man, yeah, I'll take that break <laughs> to, to, to get a chance to do boo, 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 boo. I, I can do that. She can't probably do that. They're going to ask, they're going to want, they're going to inflate stuff where it's impossible to put it together. Right. And she can't say nothing about it. And, but I believe, I believe that that would have been a great, great tour, man. Well, we might have to hook that up. That, I think that's just, wow. And I've never met her, but I heard her speak beautifully about us, and that, that, that made me at least try to put this together. Oh. And, the, you know, it got off to a pretty good start, but then, the, you know, then I could see what was going on. Tell me about a song you've done that has a connection to Anita Baker. Uh, uh, the Morning After. I wrote that song for her. Mm -hmm. We had talked and she was talking about, you know, why don't you write me that? And I, you know, because that's like a woman's, you know, she's the, she's the one that's concerned. You know, when you do some stuff like that, that's, I thought from a woman's <laughs> point of view, you, you know, I thought that's what would be great for her. And, and when we, when I got it together, I thought it was Marvin to See, me. See, he's like, I ain't giving her this song. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought Marvin said the same. He said, man, if I get a great song, man, I ain't giving it to you. <laughs> and I did the same thing, man. And we, it, it really bothered our relationship for, for, for a while. She didn't appreciate that at all. But I swear, I, I, man, that's what happened. I just, wow, man. Have y'all made up since? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Not like it used to be, but... <laughs> But, 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 you know, we have, but that's, that, that, that's, I did the same thing Mama said. I sure did. Yeah. And, it, and she would have killed it too, you know. But you killed it. Yeah, it, 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 it was still nicely done, you know. Are there any songs you've done for other artists that the public may not realize you did it? No. Wrote it? No. No, that's another thing. You just, just kept like, all of them. Just like Marv. <laughs> that's why I related to what he was telling me. I, I, I thought even at that young time when he was talk, talking, that, wow, that sounds like me. I, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want a label telling me, well, man, you better put something out there before, you know, wait a minute, so, and, and put something out there that people don't like? And you ain't ready to put something out there? That's what you're telling me to do, you know? So... I want it to be always in, my, in that sort of a position with the music, what you, the kind of music you want to do. That's, that's very, very important. Man. People want to mess around in that, that have no business in that. And I just, you do what you do. Do what you do. Nobody else does that but you. 
do develop your thing, mm -hmm. it's over. It's over then. Because all you have to do is be you. I used to talk about, to a lot of people, and they were always stunned by this, how phenomenal Mays was, yet never got recognized. Mm. I was on the internet one day, and I went, wait a minute, they never won a Grammy? Mm. Soul Train Award? American Music Award? I, I went a Blockbuster Award? I went through, and it was stunning to me, the, again, this reaction, this love from the audience. And then y'all get honored by the Trumpet Awards. Was that one of the first? That was the first. It was the first yeah. major award. That was the first. Because I think it was, it was three of you. Yeah, me, Bug, and Rome. Yeah. And the original guys. Y'all were, yeah. were very emotional that day. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It, I think the audience made me more, you know, emotional, because, at, obviously, at this point, that's not a big deal to us anymore. Yeah, it was like, it's a nice gesture and all that stuff, but when you wait this long, it's, you've gotten over that. So I was more, you know, it's nice of these people to do this. The, our fans love it probably more than what we do. And was, then you got, I got on about BT Honors, uh, finally. That's right. Uh, and... Well, again, what I found to be amazing was you this whole new generation of folks who were partying like... Wow, man. So y'all was y'all had stuff coming out, they weren't even here. Yeah. They weren't even... A lot of them were not even thoughts. You. But again, it, it was this multi-generational love and appreciation. Yeah, this... this And it never ceases. It's like night after night. Because during the show, I was saying, how many of y'all seeing us for the very first time? Some places it's... A quarter of the place, or you know, that's a lot. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's that's young people, man. I mean, I see them all up front now. I'm like, what? Well, how do they know happy feelings? Well, because you know? one, I don't care who you are right now. If I, I trust me, Frankie, this is no lie. I've said this to many a DJ where I've been at a party where it was boring, it was whack. I said, look at here. I need y'all to put on before I let go. And I said, I'm telling you, this party about to get started. And one, once they hear that, that intro, yeah, boom, yeah, yeah, the party goes crazy. Yeah, man. That's what I. T that's what I talk about. That's. Man. You can, what can you do with that? There's no way I, I can complain about any way this thing is going. We have, we have done astronomical. Next, Frankie Beverly opens up about battling vocal stress and how wearing all white linen outfits and his signature baseball caps on stage became his signature look. You're watching Simply Amazing, a conversation with Frankie Beverly right here on TV One. You've had to battle health. Mm -hmm. Your voice, that, that's your instrument. That's right. I interviewed Harry Belafonte and we talked about this when he had surgery mm -hmm. and how that caused him to lose his voice in his singing career. Lionel Richie's mm -hmm. talked about that as mm -hmm. well. Um, that is a, uh, that's a scary thought mm -hmm. for a singer and you've had to battle through that. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed enough to almost been given this Billie Holiday thing. Billie Holiday had a wonderful, beautiful voice too. But her biggest music came when she didn't have that voice anymore. Mm. God bless the child, and when she had to, she had made herself find another way to get around this problem. As much as I've been thinking about the last 50 years, 50 years, I was 15 years old when I saw it. Mm -hmm. 50 years of this, you're going to have some voice tr trouble. You're going to have some. And the, the only people that don't get voice trouble are who the people that don't work. The acts that don't work a lot, yes, you say, damn, I can still, wow, listen to that. They don't work. <laughs> 
the acts that work, right. tour, all the time, you're going to get voice problems. It comes with the territory. What I've been blessed with, man, is sometimes, sometimes he works it out for me. And I've learned how to do this thing and still get you. I don't know how. <laughs> All I know is this is very, very real. Some nights I think, I'm, wow. Because it comes and it goes. It's one of them things. It's not, thank God it's not cancer. It's, it's, it's not, I've never, no, it's just road rage. Road, right. Road. <laughs> Weariness. Yeah, yeah, it's just. Wear and tear. You know, that's what it is. It's so, a tray, it's on a tie. It is, man. <laughs> so, and sometimes it's better than what I think it's going to be. So I've learned not how, I've learned, man, just get on out there, man. I don't know how many times I've seen you off stage and you got all black on. <laughs> and then you got all white on stage. Uh, what, what, wait, are, are you planning this thing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was a people thing anyway. I had, if you look back on, on a, if, if you remember that far back, you know, but I had a bunch of stuff that I used to wear. I, I, it wasn't an all white thing. So where did the all white thing like come from? The people, I would get off stage some some places. He didn't wear white tonight, right? You know, but people would say that to me, <laughs> and I'm saying, "What's the white thing?" You know? <laughs> so, and I decided, well, okay, if they want me to white, I'll just wear white. What do you want people to always remember about Frankie Beverly and Mays? Uh, that is the real deal. That we love them. Our music speaks for itself. It's about, I care about people. I care about my brothers and sisters. People mean a lot to me. It's just always been a people person. I've gotten breaks in my life. And uh, the one thing is, just, you know, is this thing called love. And I ain't trying to be this corny kind of. I'm talking, I'm talking about love, real love. Love is the key. Somebody say, love is the key. And that's, remember whatever happened, remember Mays and remember me uh, for love. Well, Howard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Frankie, man, it was a pleasure. Uh, it was a pleasure. All right, man. I always appreciate good chatting it, man. with you. Appreciate it, man. All you're right, always too. there, too, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, you're always there, man. So how do you put 40 years into one hour? Well, we certainly hope you enjoyed our effort to explain what is it about Frankie Beverly and Mays that black folks love so much. Their sound is certainly unique. They are different. I mean, imagine any other group not putting out a new album in more than 25 years. And no matter where they go, folks still show up and pack the joint out, wanting to get tickets to sing and dance to all of their music. We got one more treat though, and that is it was at the 2017 Tom Joyner Fantastic Voyage Cruise when the DJ played Before I Let Go and he came out to the dance floor to sing to the song while he and I danced together to one of his signature hits. Have a great night and be sure to tune in to TV One's News One Now every day, 7 a.m. right here. Have a great one. <laughs>